Hi, it's coming towards the end of 2020, not everybody's favourite year, and I've been going through the pictures I've taken during the last 12 months, trying to pick some of the better ones to, to show you my collection for 2020. It's not been a good year for two reasons, the coronavirus has stopped us travelling so much, and also the fact that I'm not really taking many stills pictures. I'm taking lots of video today, it's really taken over. And it's a constant dilemma. Whenever I set up for something, I think, shall I take video today or shall I take stills pictures? I can no longer make a living from selling stills pictures, which I did for about 25 years. At the same time, there's still an income coming in from it and I'm reluctant to give it up completely. But the video has, has really taken over. So what I've managed to do, I found half a dozen stills pictures and half a dozen video clips that I'm going to show you. Some of the video clips I've already put into YouTube videos, but I'm not going to show you the entire clip, just short clips from each one, and talk about how I took the pictures. We'll start off with an image of a mountain hare in the winter in its white coat. This is taken in the month of February up in Scotland at the Findhorn Valley which has become the go-to place to photograph mountain hares. No matter how many times I witness it I'm always shocked at the numbers of wildlife photographers out there. We turned up at the small car park towards the end of the valley and it was chock-a-block full of cars and as you climb up into the hills there's photographers everywhere. It was a lovely day, deep blue sky which is fantastic settings against the white of the snow and you get lots of pictures of the hares just sitting in the snow but it was nice to get this one running and I was relatively low down I wasn't actually lying in the snow I was sitting down with the tripod at a very low height but because of the, the slope of the hill I was beneath the hare so it set him up against the sky four thousandths of a second 800 ISO with the Olympus 300mm and the M1X camera body Taken on the same trip, snow buntings in the car park by the Cairngorm ski lifts, another very well known spot, lots of photographers there every day photographing these birds. We built the mound of snow and then put a few seeds on top of it and every 20-30 minutes or so quite a large flock of snow buntings will come down and start to feed and occasionally squabble with each other too. Very similar settings to the previous picture, 300mm lens again with the M1X body, one four thousandths of a second, but only 400 ISO this time. Yellow crowned night heron with a crab, this was taken in Mexico where we spent Christmas and New Year. This was a huge dilemma, I started off taking stills pictures, the whole process of catching this crab went on for two maybe even three minutes and all the time I'm thinking shall I start to shoot video but I'm gonna miss the perfect stills picture if I do so in the end I didn't do any video at all but it would have looked fantastic if I had 300 mil lens again but with the 1.4 extender on 3200th of a second and 800 ISO Dalmatian pelicans taken at Lake Kukina in northern Greece. These birds are very tame and approachable. This is taken with the 14 to 42 mil Panasonic lens at, at 14 mil. Not a lens I use very often. And as I was taking the pictures, I wasn't convinced they were very sharp. But it turned out they were. It was just the autofocus was so slow compared with the telephoto lenses I would normally be using. Five thousandths of a second, f6.3, 400 ISO. Still amazes me how good modern autofocus lenses are. This song thrush was taken at 6,400th of a second. The ISO was 1,600 and it's autofocused as the bird has gone past. It was about 130 mil on the 100-400 zoom. And it's caught it amazingly sharp. They're getting better and better, these autofocus lenses. And the sixth and final picture of the stills images is a pair of griffin vultures fighting at a feeding station in Bulgaria. 
there's a very large permanent hide here and lots of vultures and uh, wolves and jackals all sorts of things golden eagles come down to this feeding station it's a very productive place 1600 ISO 2500th of a second with the Olympus 300 mm lens and now my favorite video clips from the year field fair taken in the Midlands stripping hawthorn berries off the bush in slow motion this was taken with the Olympus M1X so this would be 120 frames per second very important to have that nice deep blue sky I wouldn't want a wishy-washy white sky behind it nice and colourful as it is and this was something that I've never done before photographing fish underwater using a GoPro camera I simply put the camera into the water and left it there and the fish seemed to be curious about it and, and swam up to it as if they were looking at it I did create a YouTube video on this but this is just a, a short version but I could sit and watch these fish for hours mostly dace and gudgeon long tail tits taken in the Midlands this is something I have a go at every year as they start to collect feathers for the nest I provide them with some feathers on various bits of gorse and again slow motion this would be 180 frames per second on the Panasonic camera they are quite lightweight birds and they do sometimes have a problem working out how to pull the feather out but this was a very intelligent individual and he worked it out a grey heron taken not long after I discovered slow motion and how wonderful it was now the problem with doing this in slow motion is you have to manually focus so as I'm coming up the bird I'm having to change the focus and it's actually quite difficult to do you have peaking on so that the in focus parts of the picture turn a red color which makes it a lot easier but it's still quite hard to do especially as you're moving the camera at the same time so you've got your hands on the tripod handle moving it as steady as you can and also turning the focusing ring with the other hand Now I created a bullfinch video for YouTube very very recently but I didn't get these slow motion pictures until afterwards. The berries I've provided by keeping them fresh from the summer, the rowan tree berries. And although it is in slow motion it's easy to forget that it's slow motion it starts to look quite natural and if I actually was to play this at normal speed I tend to feel it moves too quickly but if you can preserve some red berries then put them out in the winter when there's none left and you just got a, a brown hedgerow they stand out for miles around and the, the birds see them and come to them quite readily and finally a slow motion clip of a black red star drinking at a pool in Spain but clearly very uncomfortable with all the honeybees buzzing around him and that's it 
my favourite six video clips for 2020. Thanks for watching.